Welcome back to my art classes. It's really good to see you again. Today we're going to multitask. We're going to be both folk artists and sculptors as well. You ask me how? I'm about to tell you. Sculpting has been around forever. It's a form of three-dimensional art. There are so many different types of sculptures. There's casting, there's molding, there's carved, there's assemblage. Now, when you're casting, you're actually pouring liquid into something and letting it harden, and then you take it out and work with it. Molding is when you use clay or wax and you shape things. Carved is actually when you remove something, whether it's chipping off marble or whittling off of a piece of a stick to make a toy. Today we're going to go with the assemblage, which is taking items and adhering them together. Whether you're using glue or nails, it's still assemblage art. We're going to go a little um, recycling on this. No nails, no nothing like that. We're going to use things that we have around the house, but it's going to be amazing. Now, for our folk art side, these are artists who are self-taught. I imagine that when, say, Grandpa learns it, he's going to teach his grandchildren how to do it. So you're learning it, but it's still self-taught. They didn't go to college or school or anything to learn this. They learned it out of necessity and for decorative reasons. They wanted to make their living space beautiful, but they also wanted function. So they made their own forks out of wood. They made their own bowls. They made their own traps. Both have use in everyday life. Now new technologies has changed it so much that almost anything can make. I mean, let's talk about a 3D printer. It can make anything. So we're going to go back and we're going to use our hands and we're going to use the tools that we have and make it our own. I'm ready. Journey time. Let's go. I know we gave you a materials list, but I want to go through it just one more time with you because when you have it all in front of you and all set up, it makes it really easy. I have my treasure box because if I'm going to be doing eyes on our special folk art masks that are for decorative, uh, that one looks good. You can tell I've used it for a few things. I'll take two of these out just in case. I'm not sure if I'm going to make giant eyes or small eyes. I have two different types of egg cartons. They both have different shapes on both sides. I have my corrugated cardboard and this one is whole but just like in other lessons if you want to peel it back love that sound. Sound has a lot to do with being artistic I'm telling you. Now this one is different. Can you see the difference in the thickness of the inside of the corrugated? This one's going to be a little harder to peel. So if that happens, just go in with your finger. Don't do it too hard because when you squeeze corrugated cardboard, let's try another corner. Sometimes one side works better than the other. Sometimes it doesn't work at all. When you squeeze corrugated cardboard, as I was saying, um, you can squish these little balls. This is not going to cooperate, but that's okay. I'm going to pull it anyway and see what happens. Aha! Never give up. Now the bottom's ripping, but that's okay. Ready? This is going to be really loud. Because we're going to be doing something a little odd, I'm going to probably use this. This I probably won't. Too big for my little uh, trash holder. When you keep something like this near you, I'll just fold it up and stick it in. It helps for the cleanup process. You will have your newspaper or old sheet or something on here. So you can wrap it up and throw it away or recycle it if it's all paper. But I'm going to save these. They're two different things. I don't know when I'll use them or how I'll use them, but I'm saving them. Also, there's the paper bag. This one was a lunch bag, so it's smaller, but you could use a large grocery bag. These are all the things that we're going to be doing. Remember when I told you folk artists, they used what was around them. They, they sometimes made their own tools. So today we're going to be making our own materials and we're using man-made tools, which we're pretty blessed to have. These look like I don't know, noses, ears, eyes. So now the big reveal. I'll show you the one that Miss Linda did. 
I thought about doing self-portraits and then I realized, why don't I just let my students do whatever they'd like to do? You can see I used some of these um, egg cartons and I put the bridge of the nose. I remembered my eyebrows. Couldn't see cheeks and there was a lot of negative space there and I thought, oh my gosh. And I just used a little bit of this pulled corrugated cardboard. And then again, too much negative space. It made a very long chin and I didn't want this. So I just put a little tiny piece in. The hair was fun. I was looking at this going, how am I going to put hair on this with cardboard? It's gonna stick out. And I want this one to be a little more realistic. That's when I got my paper bag out. And what I did is just cut it, put it down, glued it around the um, edges of the face, and then I got my scissors out and gave myself a haircut. It was pretty fun. It was, it, was, it was just a lot of fun. When you're doing things like this and you have to think hard to figure out how to do it, that's when you know you're doing it the right way. So I'm gonna put this regular looking face and then I thought, let's go a little out of the box. And I started already by cutting out a head shape. This is just a piece of you know used cardboard that I am going to repurpose. And I've already used my circles to do the eyes and obviously I was right when I picked this out because these are going to be the eyes. So I can put these back in my treasure box but, or try to. All right, so I'm not gonna cut them out yet. Let's just, cause this one's gonna be goofy. I wanna get goofy on this one. And I thought this would be fun for the hair. Pretty much I just went in with my cardboard and did V's, triangles, one after the other. Corrugated cardboard is hard to cut. If you need help, ask help, ask for help. The bigger the corrugated spaces are, the easier it seems to cut. Now, all of these little triangles that I cut out, I kept in a little bucket because I never know where I'm gonna use it. If I'm gonna go a little wild with this, I'm gonna save these silly pieces. So we've got some, looks like a crown. So what I need to do is put it behind the mask. Oh yeah, there we go. And then maybe I can use these little ones to put in the front so it looks three-dimensional. So I've already cut into this one and I actually really like the thickness of it. So here we go. Circles are almost as hard to cut out as they are to draw. So remember, chomp with your scissors, move the paper, don't squeeze too hard. I can actually feel that I'm squishing all those nice little openings in between it. It's something that I had to write down when I was doing my first mask. Don't squeeze so hard. Even though grown-ups seem like we know a lot of stuff, a lot of times we are still learning with every single thing we do. So you gotta give us, oh my gosh, wouldn't these make great ears? So I was gonna throw those in my little bucket, but I think I'm gonna put those off to the side. Those are really interesting. So now I am constructing it, noticing I'm not gluing it right away. If you glue it right away, no, I think I'm gonna put them in the middle. If you glue it right away, then you don't have any chance of changing it because once it's down, generally it glues pretty fast. So we need a nose, I think. Oh, look at the shape of this. It is, a, oh my gosh, what do you see? It's a perfect nose. I didn't notice that before. Now this you might need grown-up scissors with. You might need help cutting these because there's so many different ups and downs and they're thick. Ah, two hands. I am in control. All right, let's go up the side here. I almost have it off. You could pull it and rip it off, but then you could maybe destroy that shape that you saw in there. See what happens when you pull. This one came out easy. This is what I was talking about. Look, it's, it's a nose. It's like the perfect nose. A lot of things get Miss Linda excited, especially when it's creative things. I start to talk fast. I start to say wild things. And it's only because it's so much fun. Right now, it looks kind of like a shoe with a boot or a leg with a boot, foot with a boot, something with a boot. But this is what I meant. Look at this. Is this not the best nose ever? <laughs> Should I straighten it or let's just make everything pop off of this one. I think I've got a theme going now. 
<laughs> I'm sorry, this is, a, this is amazing. To be able to have it. Now it's not laying completely flat. So I can push it a little bit or I can just trim it. So I gave a haircut to the other one. Now we're giving a nose trim. So I am having a really good start. I have to move my eyes more now that I have that. <gasps> now we need a mouth. Let's look around, look around, find what we could see. That one's sticking out. So we need, let's do a corrugated mouth. Let's use this one that was so difficult. You work so hard on something, you might as well use it. Now this little piece, I know I'm not gonna be able to use, so it goes right in my garbage bucket. Hmm, we could do this and it could be like teeth. That would be great. Let's do teeth. Um, upper lip goes up, down, up, down. Up, down. It even snaps. <laughs> so you get a little uh, fun. All right, so, hmm. Yes, yeah, so let's just cut it across here bigger than you want it so that you can always trim stuff off. Oh yeah, and I'm gonna bend this too. We're going to have this sticking up too. Hmm. Doesn't look so much like a mouth. Should we cut it in half and make two pieces? Good idea. Okay. So we'll cut this off. Cut this off. Cut it in half. Um, zigzag it or make it straight? If we make it straight, he'll look mean. So let's just have a grumpy, grumpy Gus here. More scraps in my garbage. All right. Upper lips. And this does not have to be perfectly symmetrical because this one's going to be goofy. Ooh, I, I'm thinking we should do it like this. Yeah, okay. Now, I'm at a point where I'm ready to glue some stuff down so that I don't lose what I have. So, again, Elmer's or white glue will work fine. Push, push. Now, when Miss Linda does art, she usually has music playing, and I kind of miss that. So when you're doing your artwork, I think that music would be great. Now, you, the, this is going to need a lot of white glue, or I could use my thick, heavy, tacky glue. I'm going to move my little bucket out of the way. I'm going to go with, <laughs> starting to glue my hair down and not even on purpose. I'm going to glow with this gloppy glue because I really think that this piece is going to need to really be, whoa, Nelly. I always say to make it look like either candy cane or a, or a um, cotton swab, and then you'll have enough to move around. And notice I'm using my bigger toothpick, or you could use a twig. Let's see. Oh, gosh. I'm already loving it. Let's get the hair on since I already smushed some glue on there. Now, if I put the glue on here... It's, I'm not going to know where it's going to stick. So what I'm going to do is actually, now that I have these glued, gently turn it upside down. This, since it's heavy cardboard on heavy cardboard, corrugated cardboard, I'm going to use quite a bit of glue. I want it to stick. Now, we don't want it to look like he has a crown, so I need to go up high enough to where it actually looks like hair. Push and count to 10 if you like, but since you're working in your own space and you're not moving, you can do it. It's a little crooked, so I'm going to slide it. Even though I said it doesn't have to be symmetrical, sometimes, depending on who you are, you want it right there. Eyeballs are going to be hard. Maybe you can find something over there with that. So we'll do our lips next. We decided to do them this way or this way. I moved it. Now I forgot. Nope. That's a happy man. We went kind of a growling, a growling dude. Glue, glue. You don't need any in the middle if it's sticking up. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now see, I totally smashed those, which is fine. When you push this, you just push all the air out of there. I will be a little careful because I do want this to be a kind of a toothy growl look on them. You can change your theme or your idea anytime you like when you're doing this. That's the fun part about doing folk art and craft. You're just kind of working with what you have. I don't know. Should I just do these as trim them and make them eyebrows? Do something. I don't like ears. That's a little too much nonsense for Miss Linda. Hmm. Or maybe I was wrong. Let's just cut them in half and see what happens since it's the same on each side. 
Yeah, I don't like that either. Hmm. If I do this, he's like, what? What? All right, let's make him be in like, huh, what? So he's a growling, confused <clears throat> mask to decorate your walls because these are decorations. We talked about assemblage, sculptures. Sometimes folk artists made things to use, like they made their own pottery, they made their own silverware. If you notice, I double checked, so I put the glue on the right side. Every time you do something with the stuff around you, it's either for decoration or for practical uses. Okay, so far so good. I can't believe I love that. So let's get these little scraps out. Bum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. To do this, I can actually just draw. Let's use our white glue because this I can just go straight across. We'll do one line, see if that's enough. Since it's that's high, let's just put a few dots just to be safe. Since you saved these and you've already cut them out, it's a matter of just going plunk, 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 and you're done. And I'm gonna turn these a little sideways so that they give it him a little more goofiness because this is goofy, goofy mask day. All right, so glad I saved these. See how you can make life a little easier for yourself by just not throwing it away right, right away? When we're all done, I want you to throw everything away. Unless you're going to do another mask and show someone else how to do it. This one's open. I like that. I'm going to put that one right in the middle. It's my open one. I have room for two more. And since this is white glue, you have a little time to slide them over. Oop, look at these guys trying to have their own little party. All right, let's do this. Okay, so far that looks good. I could almost use some more sticking out, so I think I'll do two more on each side just to even it out. When you're doing it, just go wild. Try stuff, and if you put something on and you don't like it and it's not super tightly glued yet, go ahead and take it off. All right, so I used a long one over there. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna lift this up so you can see. So far, so good. This is a little wild and crazy, dude. And I like it so far. Eyeballs, think I'll cut these out. Again, ask a grown up for help if you can't do it. I'm gonna cut right down the middle so I get at least, uh, this is a two handed job. So at least, oh, these look the same. So I'll go this way. And watch your hands underneath here too, all right? I was just telling myself that in my own mind. Be careful, Miss Linda. <laughs> That's so funny. They almost look like two little volcanoes. But go around. Remember, move the paper. Your scissors are just chomping. <laughs> so I'm going to move him a little lower so that he looks... Or I could put him right against the nose. We'll see. After I cut him out, we're going to see before we glue, right? Don't glue it down until you're ready to glue it down. All right. Ooh, that's spooky. I think I'll just leave him low or high. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know what? Not high. We're going low. Everybody agree? I agree. All right. I'm going to use my gloppy glue because this is thick. Now, if you want to do more than what I've just shown you, if you want to keep adding things to yours, you can. You can, like I usually do, walk away, come back and look at it, see if I would add something here. Because once you put it on, it's not like you can take it off. But so far, my silly, goofy male versus my sort of sweet and... I don't know, Not don't have to be afraid of her. She looks pretty, pretty nice because that's my self-portrait. And then you have this guy who's just fun. Have fun, try to do your own self-portrait. Try to do your mom's, your dad's. You could do anything you like, but just use the materials that you have at home. When you're done, don't forget, everything gets put away. Have fun with this, I certainly did. So 
feeling creative, a little folksy artist here. I enjoy doing that and I hope that you do use repurposed materials. This is supposed to have that folk art vibe and yet still be a decorative sculpture, an assemblage sculpture. So look around, find what you can find and if you're young ask for permission because we don't want to get in trouble for taking stuff we shouldn't have. I am looking forward to seeing your artwork. Please post it on my social media pages. I miss that one-on-one. -on -one. So when I get to see yours, it brings back fond memories. So thank you. See you next week.